It's time for the Susan Taylor Podcast, where we discuss the yoga of mind, medicine, and healing. Author of Feeling Good Matters, Sexual Radiance, and the Vital Energy Program, Dr. Taylor imparts authentic knowledge and practical tools that inspire, educate, and empower us to be a healing force for positive change. So join us and take your life and our planet to the next level. Hello and welcome to episode 131, Emotional Eating. Are you craving nourishment? You know, I thought to relabel emotional eating in this episode by shedding some light on why we crave sugar and how we would do best by taking a new perspective. So today I'll talk about what is emotional eating and how it's defined and why do we really eat under stress and foods that really give us nourishment. So the questions I'd like to ask is what is emotional eating and why do we do it? And how do we really curtail it if we even want to curtail it? You know, if you find yourself getting up from where you are and walking down to the refrigerator or pantry, you know, where you were about 15 minutes ago, looking for something to eat when you're bored or avoiding what you're doing, you know, or upset about something. You know, when we find comfort in food, it's pretty common. You know, it's more common than we actually think. Because, you know, food is one of the four primitive urges that exist. And, you know, the others I've spoken about before, sleep, which means we shut down and shut out. You know, sex is the other one in self-preservation. Stress and eating, you know, do go hand in hand, and sometimes they don't. But I've been asked by our community to talk about stressful eating and ways to really deal with it. So that's what really was the... Uh, the motivation behind this uh, episode. When we're stressed first, there are many different kinds of stress we have to think about. Physical stress, sleep deprivation, psychological stress, environmental stresses, you know, whether in high altitude, you know, under conditions of maybe extreme heat, trauma causes stress, infection. These are just some of the few. You know, in animal models, when they do research, there are standardized stresses such as immobilization or electrical shock. I don't like to talk about any of those things, but so stress is a common, you know, a common word that we use throughout many, many things. Yeah, but anything that we record as a perceived threat to our existence is stress. So let's define stress here as perception and a perception that we're in danger. You know, when we feel that our livelihood, our health, or anything is not in order, we experience an awareness that may say, hey, you know what, I'm in danger. And that's really where stress comes from. And in our meditation trainings, as many of you know out there, we really talk about it, uh, meditation as a way to really change our perception of what is stressful and what is not. So now let's turn, why food? Why does food come into play when we're under stress? Well, Negative emotions are destructive, and here I include negative self-talk. You know, it's the demise of our health and vitality. Negative talk leaves us feeling empty, alone, guilty, jealous, fearful. We can go on and on. And food is believed to be a way to fill that void and create a false feeling of fullness or temporary wholeness. You know, this is in line with craving sweets or not having sweetness in our lives. Now, with all that's going on in the outside world, and we know that it's a little bit, you know, upside down, and at the same time, maybe it really isn't, it's more important, though, that we learn how to go within and bring our mind back to the body. And I'll be doing a class this Thursday night on bringing the mind back into the body. It's called Relax to the Core, and then our topic is going to be bringing the mind back into the body. Because when we can't fill that void externally, which we never can, by the way, it has to be filled internally. And you know, in my new book, Return to Radiance, which will be coming out in a couple of weeks, I speak about bringing, you know, or binging actually, bringing our mind back home, but binging. And you know, binging is something to do with filling that void, bringing wholeness back. But you know, emotional eating is slightly different, but the concept of filling the void and emptiness is really what I want to drive home. When we're negative or we're discontent with ourselves, it does cause change in our biochemistry. 
So that's a reality. Stress changes our brain hormones leading to cravings, and that's instinct. So what happens when we're under stress, the alarm, relax, our, the alarm reaction gets set off in the brain and our body wants to adapt. Remember, our body always wants to be in homeostasis. Our body is a beautiful, beautiful mechanism that was clearly designed to keep us alive. So when the alarm goes off, the body being so incredibly intelligent has that operating system, it wants to put things back in order. But if we look from a psychological nutritional perspective, when our mind is under stress, the body also secretes those neurohormones that bring our sugar levels down. Why? Because our brain utilizes glucose. When the glucose levels go down, you know, our, our brain needs fuel sources. So because when we're under stress, our brain becomes very active and it utilizes glucose. Let's just do a little side, a side, uh, bar here, you know, our brain lacks fuel stores. You can't store fuel like a muscle can. So it requires a continuous supply of glucose and it consumes about 120 grams daily, which is about 420 kilocalories. And it's actually 60% of the utilization of glucose by the whole body. So our brain, in other words, uses a lot, it needs a lot of energy to keep going. So when we're under stress, that supply gets you know, used up quite quickly. And our stress neurohormones circulate, and when they do, we need sugar. So let's turn to a psychological concept. We crave love and affection as human beings. Even animals do. Everything wants to be seen, heard, loved, wants affection. And what a better way to do it than to eat sugar and gain some sweetness in our life. Who doesn't have the fond memories of fresh baked muffins or cookies or ice cream? I've been in correspondence with many of our, our teachers out there and our students in the meditation trainings. And, you know, I get pictures sent to me, you know, I bake bread now. And that sweetness, that sweetness and that craving is biological as well as psychological. So why should we condemn ourselves and say that we're doing this emotional eating and we have to stop and we're putting a negative connotation on something that is biological as well as psychological, but in a good, let's turn it around and say it's in a positive, good way. My motto has always been have your cake and eat it too, right? But without gaining weight and putting yourself into an unhealthy situation. So there are three components to look at when we look at diet and nutrition. And I always speak about this, but I'm going to bring it back up to the forefront. I speak about timing and you heard about timing is everything. And it's quite true. Your metabolism burns hottest midday. So if you want your cake and eat it too, have your comfort foods midday. We want a little sweetness in our life, have it midday. It'll do less harm on the metabolism if indeed you're eating harmful foods. And I'm talking about simple refined carbohydrates in large quantities. We all know that when we tell ourselves we're going to start our diet tomorrow, the mind rebels. One, it'll always rebel. I'll start tomorrow. Tomorrow never comes. And that must sound familiar to many. But we have to do keep in mind you want to keep your comfort foods midday. Keep in mind also that refined sugars actually aggravate our biology, leading to fluid retention, weight gain, mental agitation, as well as dullness. We swing between the two and physical exhaustion. And also, if we look at other models of medicine, whether it be traditional Chinese medicine or Ayurveda, eating those you know, refined sugars weaken the pancreas and liver, which in turn can cause inflammation in the body, not to mentioning the weakening of our immune system. So we still go for sweets knowing all of this, but keep it in mind that it's natural. We want to go for that sweet taste. All of our tissues, apart from bone, are primarily nourished by the sweet taste. And that subtle essence of our immune system is known as ojas, in Ayurveda, it's also nourished by the sweet taste. And it has a direct effect on our mind. And that's what I was talking about, bringing sweetness into our life. And in the right dose, it promotes happiness, contentment, calmness, and cheerfulness. Now, I mentioned three components to look at with diet and nutrition. I said timing is one. The other is the quality of foods that we eat and the quantity. But what I'd really like to talk about is sweet foods 
and talk about the sweet taste. Sweet foods pacify that need. It gives us the comfort that we need. Seeds are sweet, like pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, sesame, or, or even a sunflower, safflower and sunflower. Those seeds are very good. Now, I'm not talking about people that have diverticulitis, that seeds, they're not supposed to be eating seeds. I'm talking about just in the general health, seeds have a sweet taste. I'm not telling you to eat seeds. Herbs and spices also pacify that sweetness that we're looking for, like basil, uh, cardamom, cinnamon, coriander, fennel, garlic, mint, uh, poppy seeds, vanilla, rosemary. All of those can help pacify, Not they're not all sweet, but they can pacify that general nature of wanting to go for the sweet food. There are good oils that help with that. We have almond oil, we have avocado oil, coconut ghee, olive oil, sesame oil, nuts, they help. They're heating a little bit, but they have a sweet, what we call post-digestive effect. We have legumes, right? We have mung beans, which are my favorite, and uh, split mung also. We can make some kitchery, and that recipe is in the Feeling Good Matters book. That helps with the sweet taste when it's combined with the right herbs and spices. We have grains like basmati rice, and it's so light, it's easy to digest. Very, very good. And those that eat dairy, uh, it's, you know, sweet and sour coming together can actually help. So these are kind of, kind of things that we want to look at. Sweet tasting vegetables are like the beets, carrots, uh, yams, sweet potatoes, nice to have with a little bit of ghee in the oven. These are all substitutes for refined sugar. Fruits, we can have uh, mangoes. Mangoes are very, very good raspberries, uh, some strawberries, but again, you want to make sure they're not sprayed, blueberries. So the takeaway here is what I want to really say is add sweets for your heart, but add sweet foods with intelligence, meaning intelligence in the food itself. I'm not talking about your intelligence, but food that's been ripened correctly, that's been organically grown, not sprayed with pesticides, not devoid of its own intelligence, in other words. But we also want juicy fruits and also dates instead of cookies and ice cream. Although you can have your cookies and ice cream, but please do it midday. We could pacify our worries that we have when, it, when they come up and they surface with nourishing meals, right? We can use food in our diet, our diet and nutrition as a way to work with comforting ourselves because that's the topic of this episode is comforting ourselves. Let's not talk about um, eating, you know, emotional eating as, oh, there's something wrong with me. Look at it as, wow, my mind and body are crying out. I need some comfort now. And rightly so, we do need comfort because there's so much fear out there. People are running around trying to get their life back in order, not realizing many that you have to change your life now and change your lifestyle habits and go back to the inside and find that source of nourishment. And we wanna also think about foods that support great brain health here that'll add that nourishment, walnuts, almonds, coconut, almond milk. And if you need to eat those forbidden sweets, as I always say, I recommend in Feeling Good Matters, eat them midday when your metabolism burns the, high, uh, the hottest. And also initiate new actions and enthusiasm in your life. Let's let go of the old, let's step into the future not what's going to happen to me. What am I want to, what do I want to create? How do I want to go forward? Because now I feel comfortable and I'm nourished. You know, spring is here leading into summer. It's time to step out with optimism and spend time creating the world you want to see. Pranic energy is vitality. Vitality is what we all need and how to breathe. Join me on Thursday nights, 7.30 to 8.30 Eastern Daylight Time, and I'll bring you through a class and we'll work together. And I'll give you a talk followed by a practice. And we'll learn, first of all, to breathe skillfully using maybe the Soham Pranayama practice to coordinate the inhale and exhale, bringing ourselves back to a healthier state learning to meditate, taming the mind to harness the energy of that. We want to tame that mind so we could harness that energy. And pranayama is the key for that. 
We want to learn these skills because these skills are going to provide the comfort and nourishment that we need to step forward into our new world. So don't lose your nourishment, that intelligence that you have to nourish yourself by labeling your eating as emotional eating. Take a new perspective. Nourishment for the soul when I'm not getting it from the outside. And there's nothing wrong with this. And that brings us to the end of this episode. And as always, do your research. If you know someone who may need to know about the topic, please have them join us. Pass it along. Send the link to someone. Join me on Thursdays. We have a new face for our store. We're using Shopify now. So sign in, join, and you'll be able to get access to any of the courses, any of the digital downloads, and the live events. Know that the Susan Taylor podcast does come out every week and is available on susantaylor.org, iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, and other podcast platforms. And join me for behind the scenes, question and answer, and some of the topics that do come up and come out of this episode. And as always, until next time, remain calm, consciously aware, living in the moment.